Hi there. So um, I just actually gave a talk called ASTs uh, or beginner uh, beginner's guide to ASTs. And uh, uh, last night I created this example for that talk uh, because I had a couple examples, but they weren't super practical. I wanted something a little more practical. So um, I created this and I think it's actually super useful. So here's the basic gist. Um, this will not be allowed when uh, ES modules land in CommonJS. This is like kind of a recent uh, um, revelation, um, but uh, as like the node, the people working on uh, ECMAScript modules in Node, um, as they've been researching and things, it just like is not reasonable to assume that we can statically analyze common JS modules. Um, so where like FS and path and child process, all of these things are um, are like built-in modules that use common JS to export themselves, um, and it's not possible for us to do. A import specifier from that uh, because we have no idea what you've tacked onto modules.export or module.exports. And so, um, like, this is totally okay importing default, that'll just get you module exports, um, but this is not okay. And it works today because we're transplanting with Babel and Babel does some magic stuff at runtime to make things work, but uh, like it's it's not going to work. So this is what I uh, what I did. So um, I, we've got this idea of code mods, um, which will basically use ASTs to modify your code, it's like way better than find and replace. Uh, no matter how good your regex skills are, I mean, try to try to do this. Like, is this resolve referring to this resolve or this resolve? You need to be able to understand the semantics uh, and of the language and stuff. You can't do this with regex. So yeah, doing a code mod uh, is, is great. So um, I wrote a plugin uh, using Babel uh, doing this. There's JS code shift and that's cool, but I have a hard time understanding JS code shift. I've never really had success writing stuff for it. But with Babel, uh, you can write a plugin uh, to do basically the same thing. So here um, I have an import declaration. I look for some specifiers. Um, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and walk through this plugin uh, really quick. So um, I'm going to, I basically um, look for uh, all the import statements in the program uh, with these import declarations. And an import statement can have um, an import default specifier and other import specifiers. Um, so these, all of these are together in an array called specifiers. Um, and I'm going to uh, separate them out between default and just regular specifiers. So in some cases, that's going to be an array of a couple of items, um, two items here, uh, one item here with no default and one item here with only a default. So I separated out to just the import specifiers and the import, import default specifiers. And then um, I get the source, which in this case, or, or uh, it's just the string value of these things. And um, if there are no specifiers, so like there may be a default specifier, but there are no um, import specifiers, or uh, the node modules does not include that source, so it's not a node module. Um, or like you could create your own array of modules that you know are common JS. You might like pull them out of package JSON or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, if there are um, no node modules that, uh, or if it's if it's not in the node modules, then we can exit early. So like if it's if we're importing something that's from um, uh, ECMAScript module, and you could do like even read uh, the uh, source from the file system and find out if it's using exports or or requires or like common JS and stuff. You could you could go a little deeper into this. Um, there's also this is built in module uh, that could be helpful. Um, and so, yeah, but basically determine whether or not the source is um, exporting itself as an ES module or a common JS module um, and try to do that statically. And if it is an ES module, then you can just jump out of this and everything's fine. You don't need to change the imports or exports. Otherwise, we need to make some changes to how we're importing it. So um, we create this member object name identifier um, so that we can know like, okay, what do we call this? Like we want to call it path, right? So like ultimately we want to say path, get rid of this resolve and find the resolve and do path. And then we want to get rid of this uh, read file uh, and we're going to keep the existing default specifier and we'll, we'll do that. So that's basically what we're looking to do um, in our code mod. And so um, if there is a default specifier, like in the case of FS, then we'll just use that one. Um, and that this is the default specifier path. Uh, we'll get the node and the local um, 
for the um, that's the identifier object. So it's a type identifier and the name is whatever it's called. So FS for this case. Um, if there isn't one, like in the case where we're importing from path, then we'll create one. We'll generate a unique identifier um, based off of the source. So in our case, that's path. And what it's going to generate for us is underscore path. Um, but like if you didn't like that, then you could probably add um, a check to see, is there a path variable in the scope here? And if there is, then go ahead and generate one for me. If there's not, then I just want to use path because that makes the most sense or something. So you could you could add a little bit more to that. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, we'll, we'll create an identifier. And then in, at our path in this import declaration, um, we'll get that those specifiers and we'll push on an import default specifier. So we're effectively doing this um, path. So that's effectively what's, what's happening here. Um, and then now that we have a member object name identifier, we're going to go through each of the specifiers. So all of the, uh, all of these, and for each one of those, we'll get the name of the specifier. So in this case, the resolve and, um, for, um, uh, or like with that name, we'll take the specifier scope, which in this case, and in, in the case of like all ES modules, that will be the program scope. And we'll get all the bindings to, um, that, uh, um, to that name, which I totally just realized we can just do this because I, yeah, yeah. Node imported name. Yeah. So, uh, we'll, we'll get all the bindings to, um, variables to that name and we'll destructure out the reference paths property off of that. So this is a path to all references. Uh, so in this case, it's a path to this, um, but not to these. And uh, in this case, it's a path to this, but not to this. Um, and then there's, it doesn't apply for child process here. Um, and so for each one of these reference paths, we'll take that reference path and replace it with a member expression. So effectively we want to say instead of resolve, we want it to be path.resolve, right? So now it's a member expression instead of just an identifier, right? So we're going to replace it with a member expression where uh, the left side or the object is the member object name identifier and the identifier or the, the uh, property is the original identifier or an identifier of the name of the thing that we were imported by specified, specified import. So in this case, resolve. Okay, cool. So we replace that and then we remove the specifier. Once we've um, updated everything, we just say, get rid of this. And remember this, we, we already added the path there. So we just remove that uh, import specifier. Sweet. So uh, that's that's how it works. Um, and then to actually run this across your code, I envision somebody somewhere um, to actually create a CLI that makes this really easy. Um, but it's it's not too difficult with Babel anyway. So a couple of things you have to do. Um, you need to have Babel core to run Babel transforms in general. Uh, Babel CLI to be able to run Babel from the command line. And then uh, recast is the um, uh, the parser and generator that you need to be able to preserve formatting. Uh, it doesn't pre preserve my lack of semicolons, but you know, who cares? I can fix that um, with uh, ESLint, so no worries. Um, so with that, uh, with those things installed, you can configure Babel uh, with uh, plugins, uh, dot slash plugins, dot JS, and parser options um, with the parser as recast and generator uh, being recast. And with that, we can now run npm run code mod. And if we go to our index here, it has been updated for us. So now we have underscore path dot resolve and fs. We're just using the existing uh, specifier uh, read file and nothing happened to our child process. So that's like kind of legit. Uh, didn't actually change resolve, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. And uh, then I can, um, yeah, like commit this and be like, hey, look, we are now compliant with uh, um, ES modules. So anyway, I, I envision somebody, maybe myself, I don't know, uh, actually making this a, a legit thing, making a CLI for it to make it really easy to run. And uh, yeah, if you want to do that, feel free. All the code's here. It's uh, under my name, Kent C. Dodds slash Babel code mod example. So hope that's helpful. This is kind of fun and interesting. Babel is awesome.